Hey everyone, Captain Leon from Captain Leon's Boating and More coming to you from the absolutely beautiful Hamptons Beach area, Long Island, New York. And I am showing off the area underneath my swim deck hatch. That lid is just beautiful now and it's the envy of some of my fellow Yama peeps. You may know Captain Ken and Mike from the YouTube channel Boating Propolis. But this is not how this video got started. It was supposed to be informative, uh, particularly about an area of concern down in the bilge that all Yamaha boat owners should be aware of. But it developed into something much more than that and a great tip and trick on how to improve uh, what could be a problem for you too. So I hope you really enjoy this video. Sit back and relax. And if you're not already a subscriber to Captain Leon's Boating and More, please do so. There's over 50 videos. They're informative. They're educational. Well, guess what? They're entertaining too, or at least I'm told. And don't forget, hit that notification bell so you never miss my latest and greatest. Hey everyone, Captain Leon from Captain Leon's Boating and More, and I cannot stress enough the importance of checking your bilge area under your access hatch for things that are going wrong. I mean, this is an area you don't commonly see on an everyday basis, but believe me when I tell you, it's subjected to, to water intrusion, rust, and other issues. And I just popped mine off and I had to stop in order to, to make this brief video just for the benefit of you all out there, okay? So let me just give you a, a quick look at what I'm dealing with here. All right, so let me show you what's going on here. I removed the hatch cover, right? The access hatch cover. Uh, give you an idea. I mean, this is a single engine boat. If you have a twin engine, uh, don't mind my little pump plug. Uh, if you have a twin engine boat, then obviously it's gonna look a little different, but the concept's basically the same. You know, this is the access cover here. Um, I have two clean out uh, hatches that open up to reach inside, but also then the center is where I reach down to remove my my clean out plug. Uh, in order to get this off, obviously there are screws all around. Mine are all stripped, so I gotta figure out something to do with that. Uh, but also you're gonna have a clamp like this, uh, which is gonna hold the top of this rubber tube to the bottom of the access hatch cover. And then right over there, that's just a drain line. And there's the drain line there. And of course that has its own clamp, which you could see right here. I'll just use a little quick tool like that to reach inside, undo those clamps, pop it off, remove all the screws, and then boom, that cover comes off. So why? Why is it so important to do this periodically? Well, you wanna take a look inside and make sure everything is in good shape. And it turns out it is not. <laughs> this is the second time that I've had to replace uh, rusted clamps that have snapped off. Um, I believe it was these that I replaced, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, now I got a couple of things going on. So one is this strap I found loose. You can see these rubber straps here. Okay, they're designed to clamp and hold tight. Uh, the way it works is there's a metal piece like this that the end of this clamp goes into. I'll give you a little idea. This goes in like this and it clamps on there. You can see the little little slot, right? And this is supposed to be bolted down somewhere in the bilge. Uh, turns out that I found uh, this metal part uh, all the way down there by the clean out, you know, not by the clean out, by the drain. Uh, I was sticking a vacuum in here to suck out some of the water. You can see this is the, the inside of the drain right there. Hopefully you can see that. Right, and that's where I found this thing, just lying down there. So it busted off. Um, you can see where they kind of are screwed in, okay? Uh, it just went ahead and it just busted right off. So what I'm doing now is I am drilling a new hole. There we go. And I'm gonna mount this piece to that, and then I'll be able to secure this clamp and get this back together. But that is not it. I got more problems. See this clamp here? All right, this, there we go. Um, down below is another one right here. And look at this, look at this. Broke right off on me. All I did was touch it and it went ahead and it just snapped. 
Um, so I'm gonna have to replace this bottom one now where it secures the bottom of this tube, right? Uh, to the area where our clean out pulls out. So point being uh, is that you got stuff going on. You got stuff going on. Hey, look at that bouncing back and forth there, right? If you don't get in here periodically, you don't know what can happen. You know, your exhaust can come loose. Um, you just need to check it out. So uh, that being said, you know, keep tabs on things and uh, get in here, uh, seal it all back up, and at least you'll have some peace of mind. So let me see what I could do to make this right. All right, so we got that bracket mounted nicely on that side wall there. Always be careful before you drill it. You know what's behind it. And uh, there's no problem with that. And now we are on the hunt to replace the broken stainless steel hose clamp. All right, so this started off as simply just an inspection of my bilge area, and we rectified all of the problems, uh, you know, with new clamps and so forth as described. But now I'm on to a new topic. How do I get rid of this, like, old rubber seal and these stripped holes? I mean, the screws that go through just spin round and round. I got to keep re-siliconing this. Look, I'm here, and I am basically uh, preaching that you get in here periodically in order to check to make sure that everything's okay. Well, with all of these stripped screws and this sealant, uh, it's not that easy to just get in here all the time. So we're trying to develop a solution. We got some ideas and uh, let's see where we go with this. So my first step is to clean everything up. Uh, this panel was in really bad shape. Uh, there was silicone all around it. It was just a bit of a disaster from the last time I made an attempt to seal it. Uh, so I went ahead and did the best I can to scrape everything off, clean it, and you know get it to be back to as close to new as possible. All right, so that takes care of that. And now we need to do the same uh, for the rim and the edge where the panel mounts. All right, somewhat tedious work, but I am cleaning all of the gunk and crap off this lip here and uh, we'll see what we can do to clean this up. You can see I used the inside of a cooler, igloo cooler, just to catch the debris. I don't want all this crap down in my bilge. All right, let's keep moving here. Oh, by the way, I'm just using like a uh, razor blade, scraping softly, using some acetone and a rag and doing what I can to not mess it up too bad. But you, know, you could see how the, the glass is all chipped here. Um, still got some decent thickness to it, uh, for what I'm planning to do here, it should grab okay. Alright, let's keep going. That was not fun, but it's done, right? At least it's as clean as I think it needs to be. Uh, and now I'm ready to uh, go forward and implement my plan, my master plan. Here's the plan. On how to get this panel uh, to fit better and be removable uh, a little bit more easily for just general routine inspection down in there. So let me show you what I want to do here. of oak uh, you can see this line running down the center we're gonna we're gonna rip this down the middle just so that we have two pieces that are just about three quarters of an inch wide uh, and about a half inch thick and I'm gonna take that strip of wood and I'm gonna fit it uh, underneath here okay uh, I've gone ahead and I've got this oak ripped uh, basically I just split it down the middle into nice three quarter inch wide pieces and these pieces have now created a frame for me 
all the way around the hatch, uh, which would give us a solid substrate for those screws to go into. I pre-drilled uh, into these holes already uh, and tested the screws going in. I do think I'm probably going to need screws a little bit longer because you got to remember the, the actual hatch sits up a little bit and that doesn't give us uh, much of thread depth going into this wood uh, at all, right? So you got to figure the hatch sits about there, just a little. I might get screws a little bit longer that would bring my my tread or my thread depth lower, right? So uh, I I'm grabbing more into this oak. Uh, so that's not a big deal. It's just a question of running to the hardware store. And I'm gonna remove the screws now and we're gonna apply the PL Marine sealant uh, to the underside, you know, of the wood under here. Uh, then we're gonna, we're gonna screw it back together Get that to set up uh, at least 24 hours or more uh, just to give us like a solid uh, frame surface and uh, I think we're gonna be pretty good I'm, I'm start I'm starting to feel the love that we're on the right path here all right so I'll remove the strips of the frame I'm about to apply the Loctite marine uh, you know adhesive sealant now let me just say this some of you might be saying hey you know why did you go with oak why didn't you go with starboard um, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I mean, from what I understand, starboard doesn't really play well with adhesives uh, or sealants that you almost need to use an epoxy to really get it to adhere well under there. I ain't getting involved with that. Uh, you know, boats have been built uh, with wood uh, for many, many, many years. I mean, yeah, going way back. And uh, oak is a solid, hard wood, similar to teak. It's not soft. It's not going to swell. It's not going to deteriorate. Uh, not that there's going to be really much water, if at all, here. This area of my boat has a tendency to stay pretty darn dry. Um, so I think we're going to be just fine. And um, it's more forgiving. When you drill holes in wood with screws versus starboard, you know, starboard, you got to go a little bigger with the hole. Uh, it, it puffs up a little bit. You know, at the top when you're drilling or screwing in, wood will stay a little flatter and the screw will dig in and create its own grooves, its own tread pattern, if you will. So uh, anyway, bottom line, that's why I went with wood. I've gone ahead and I've marked it. You know, I have top left bow. This one's top. This is the bow side. Just so I know exactly how it was, because you can see the holes are kind of like a little off in placement, depending on how Yamaha did it on that ridiculously thin ledge that they expected to hold up for years. So, uh, all right, so here we go. Gonna apply this, gonna adhere it, gonna screw it in to get it tight. Maybe I'll use some of these clamps and we'll let it set up overnight. All right, so here goes. Going for the big piece now. Trying to be neat. Don't wanna screw anything up. So we're running out of a little uh, sunlight here. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Uh, you're talking gazillion degrees today and uh, just kind of work on this after work here when I got home. But but yeah, everything's siliconed in nicely. The wooden strips are all around. Kind of coated the outside of the wood with some of that, that sealant material just to protect it if any water splashes on it from this side. Uh, it's all good. We're going to let it set up overnight. And uh, before I go in, I just wanted to take a minute to, to show you just another great little idea I had involving those clamps that you have to reach in and remove, um, you know, with that tool. Now, uh, with this new device, I really don't have to. So, so check this out. I got stainless steel clamps that have their own little twisty um, that you can do with your hand. And this one, of course, is the smaller one. You know, that's for the drain hose right there. And here is the larger one here, you know, for the top of the clean out port tube. So, you know, yeah, this is just gonna be, you know, you know, me reaching into the access port, right? We're gonna remove the, uh, 
you know, the cover, boom, and uh, reach inside, and then reach over, and then there you go. Loosen that, loosen the other one on this side. All I gotta do is pull those screws out, and boom, the panel comes right off. I don't even need any special tools because I generally do have a screwdriver on board. You know, why would I want to do this if I'm out on the water? Um, guess what? Hey, if I'm if I'm curious about a leak, right? We all complain about leaks. Where's the water coming in from? Uh, this is a, a very common place, by the way, where water comes in. Uh, the, the silicone on the outside of this leaks and water comes in there. You know, that's your shaft coming through. Uh, you know, maybe it is by the actual, you know, plug itself, your hull drain plugs. You know, these right here. I've had them leak and I've had to re-silicone that. So if you're on the water and you want to pull this panel off quickly, uh, just to keep an eye on things and see where water's coming in, why not, right? The way that I've set this thing up, boom, uh, you're in good shape. Uh, we have more to go with this uh, and we'll show you as soon as this thing sets up and dries. And we're back. <laughs> Let this thing set up for a few days. Here we go. Uh, looks like it's great. I mean, I got it all cleaned up. We're ready to move into the, the very next phase here. Uh, weather's been horrific in New York, so it's taken a little bit of time to get this done. But, um, you know, hoping to bang it out right now. Let me show you what we're going to what we're going to do right now uh, and uh, get this whole thing buttoned up. So what I'm looking at is uh, experimenting here with this Frost King Premium Rubber Self Stick Weather Seal. Will it work? No idea, but my thought is to install this all around. Uh, hopefully it'll be a water barrier, keep the water out when I do get some water in here when I'm washing the boat and cleaning it. And, um, and then, you know, if it fails, I could remove it. It's not the end of the world. Just remove the adhesive and try something else. Uh, but it will be a replacement for that silicone, uh, or so I hope. Uh, so I'm going to begin the process now of installing it. All right. Not too shabby. What do you think? Looks like uh, OEM. Nice wooden frame underneath. Yeah. All right. Project done. Ready for the big reveal? Check this out. Woohoo! Look at that. Look at that. Ah, looking pretty spanky. Uh, we'll see how it holds up, but every one of those screws are nice and tight. No stripping. Solid oak under there. Everything's silicone beautifully. Really loving it. And uh, we'll see if that gasket holds up. Uh, let me tell you, I'm going to be the envy at the beach tomorrow. That's right. All my Yama peeps will be checking out my deck hatch. That's right. Well, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I have dozens of video on YouTube. I can only hope that they're helpful. Some, some free education. Uh, always welcoming comments. I'm learning too. We're lifetime learners. Not already a subscriber. Like my content. Do what you got to do hit the subscribe button, hit that bell that notifies you when I do a new video. Otherwise, how are you ever going to know? All right, everybody, take care. Happy and safe boating.